Hello, my beautiful friends. Happy first day of Advent. Even if you don't celebrate Advent, even if you're not Christian or if uh, you're not religious, Advent is an amazing time of the year. I think Advent's amazing. I think Lent's amazing. I think because we, we consciously, if you're in a Christian tradition, you set aside 40 days. Interesting, fun fact. Advent didn't actually start out as 40 days before Christmas. Advent actually started out as a 40-day wait um, preparation period for being baptized uh, because infant baptism um, wasn't always a thing. So uh, it would be 40 days of reflection before you would be baptized. And so uh, over time, it got attached to Advent. Uh, Advent got attached to Christmas, but it always, it wasn't always that sort of thing. But even if you're not Christian, even if um, you know you're not religious, there's a special quality in the air right now, right? And and I was thinking I had an amazing weekend of just great things that our family did and our friends did together. It was just a really beautiful weekend, really and like stunning imagery, you know, beautiful music, great food, great friends, great fellowship. You know, uh, exhausting a little bit. I, I conked out on the chair before uh, for a nap. But I was thinking at various points throughout the weekend just how privileged we are, right? And in the hustle and bustle of the season, um, sometimes we can lose sight of gratitude. Um, we means me. <laughs> I don't know if it applies to you, but it definitely applies to me. So I'm trying to be very conscious this Advent season in really sort of thinking about the themes of Advent, but also, you know, trying to improve um, what I believe was Christ's message in this world, which was to shed light and love. Um, you know, Jesus, whatever your denomination, I'm, I'm not trying to insult your denomination. Um, and if you're not religious or Christian, I'm not trying to insult you as, as well. Um, I am Christian, so that's the that's where I come from. Um, but I believe that Christ came into the world to um, to share light and love, you know, the, the message always is, is to save sinners, you know, with light and love, like there's the next step, right? And Jesus, you know, worked with the poor, he worked with the, all the people that nobody else would touch, the lepers, you know, the, the poor, the, the orphans, you know, the hungry, like he, that's who he served. He didn't, you know, he didn't go hang out with all the rich people. He didn't go out and hang out with all the Hollywood stars. You know, he, he was with, um, with people and he shed light and love. And so I think that's our call, right, is to shed light and love. So the first Sunday in Advent is all about hope. Today is the Hope Sunday. And wouldn't it be awesome if hope was every day, right? Um, but this Sunday and this week, we're asked to remember, uh, you know, there's a passage in, in Galatians, um, you know, where it talks about the hope of Christ and, 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 you know, the hope that Christ brings into the world. And um, and so I'm, I'm trying to be mindful this Advent season of all of the blessings that I have, um, because it's so easy to get frustrated, like, you know, when you're driving, it's easy to get frustrated. So today I was driving around getting Christmas ornaments and I was frustrated. And then I was like, you don't get to be frustrated. You're in a car driving around, picking up Christmas ornaments um, on this trail that we had uh, for if you donated uh, stuff to our, our, our food pantry, you got to go on this little trail and pick up ornaments from local businesses. You know, you're, I mean, like how privileged are you? Like you're in a car driving around getting ornaments, you have gas, um, you're going to put ornaments on your beautiful tree that you bought yesterday with your family, with your kids operating a saw and dragging it through the woods. Epic memories. Epic memories were made. But that's a privilege. Those are privileges. Those are, those are blessings beyond measure to have those memories, to create those memories with my kids to have the beautiful tree, to have the car, to have the gas, to go, to be able to buy, um, you know, non-perishables for the, the food kitchens in exchange for this pass that lets me get these beautiful ornaments that are just gorgeous for our tree, which is gorgeous in our house that's warm and filled with love, right? All of those are blessings. Um, so I don't get to be cranky that somebody's crawling out my butt. I can pull over, let them go. And it's hard because in the moment you forget it. Like in the moment, I'm I'm very impatient. I'm not known for my patience, and uh, it's hard for me to sometimes to remember uh, to be to be patient. So that's what I'm working on this Advent. And I hope that you have a project that you would like um, 
you know, I, 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 this Advent Project book, uh, it's excellent. It, um, it is a religious book, so if you're not into religious things, you know, um, I can sort of separate for myself, um, sort of religion from spirituality and Christianity. Um, sometimes that's a little harder for other people to do, um, but this is a great book, and it's really a reflection book. You, uh, you go through and you, and it, you know, it asks you different questions like, um, when you find the perfect gift, do you keep it a secret until the very end, or is the gift a total surprise? Or are you prone to give some hints? I want to give things right away. I'm terrible. I buy something, I want to give it right away. You know, I'm also horrible at receiving surprises because I'm so nosy. Um, you know, so like it just helps you think about how you think about the world. And so I'll be working through this book. But what are we doing tonight, you wonder? Ha ha. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put a link below to um, uh, my friend Christian's channel. I met him at an event uh, in uh, here in, in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, and he does a three-card reading each week. Or he does three readings of uh, five cards. Um, and I picked card number three, or pile number three. And it was just a really good message. So uh, I'm going to link that below so you can get a message too. And follow his channel so that you can get your weekly messages. So we have our green man. There he is. We're getting ready to celebrate the Yule season. A lot of Christian traditions come from Yule. Um, there's one of our Iona stones. Um, you know, wreaths and the Christmas tree even of itself. They, they didn't decorate it. They didn't bring the tree in the house, obviously. They decorated the trees in the forest and put things on it for the animals to eat. It's from Iceland. We have one more Iona stone in here somewhere. So let's get an energy read for the week. We will do three Norns. And we'll just ask Spirit, take a second to ask Spirit to guide us what message we need to hear for this week. This may not resonate with me or may not resonate with you. Take what resonates and leave the rest for somebody else. Oh, it's like stuck on my finger. Which one is this? Kines. Here's our present energy, Kines. What brought us to there? Hmm. Interesting. Where are we going? Where are we headed? You're sticking out, aren't you? He was. All right, so I'm going to go and talk to Spirit and see what Spirit has to say about these stones. I'll be right back. This is a beautiful reading, very consistent with the, the reading that Christian did. So uh, Christian also reads runes. So uh, there are very few people that I know that read runes. And uh, he reads it a, them a little bit differently than I do, but he had pulled Fehu um, which is domesticated cattle, um, wealth, it's the stone for wealth, a stone for new beginnings. And the reading was very much about passion and new beginnings and really having the support of spirit. And this reading is very similar to that. So, um, so, uh, Ingus means seed. And, uh, and so there's a seed of inspiration and really my whole life has been a journey about peace and love and really, uh, connecting um, especially in, in the Christian tradition, and like, like you think Christians don't get along with other world religions. Well, they don't get along within Christianity either. Um, and then it, you know, be a Druidic Christian and whole, holy smokes, the Druids don't like you. The Christians don't like you. Um, whatever. I'm old. I don't care. I'm a Gen Xer. I don't have to care. But there's always been a seed there. And no matter what iteration I've gone through, whether it was, you know, getting ready to, you know, sitting down with Mother Superior and talking about my, um, my novitiate or, um, whatever, or me today, not going to church at all, um, I've never lost my faith in Jesus and who he is and the work that he did. Um, I try to sort of filter out what I perceive as, um, human, <clears throat> I don't want to be judgmental because I think churches are a really good place for people. Mosques, synagogues, they're all good places for people. Faith-based places are good for people, right? Um, that tends not to be my personal style as of late. 
but um but they are good places so i don't i'm not trying to cast aspersions on them but i think a lot of the rules that come through are definitely human made and sort of the practices um really get away from what jesus taught which was go out and feed people like loaves and fishes get out there stop you know stop gambling in the temple <laughs> like i mean like jesus gave real specific lessons in his lifetime here so even if you don't believe he was a savior i do but if you don't that's okay you can believe he was a really good guy that you know wanted the nonsense to stop and and that example you know we we see it in jesus we see it in gandhi we see it in in all kinds of religious and spiritual leaders right so that seed's always been there and kina's I just want to read because I, I was struck by the words. You know, I see these every day, but I just, it's always so helpful to read them too. I have to find them. Where is it? Torch. That's what it translates to. Vision, creativity, inspiration, improvement, and vitality. Right, so as I enter the Advent season, um, I really want to be, you know, I really want to communicate, you know, sort of, I, I, if you follow the channel, you know, I believe that I'm a conduit of, you know, between, um, you know, the outer faiths, people who are spiritual, who aren't necessarily a religion, um, you know, and just trying to help everybody see that we're all light and love. Like we are light and love. It's not something we have in us. It is us. These, this is all meat suits, this body that we have. This is our meat suit, but inside all of us, even evil people, there's light and love. We just have to get to it, right? We have to get ourselves out of the way of our light and love so it can shine. And um, that requires people to light a torch and lead the path, lead people down the path. Um, and that's, you know, also in Tiwaz. Tiwaz is about leadership and direction. I mean, it's an arrow pointing and uh, just to be complete so you can hear the words for that one. Uh, Tiwaz is, the print on here is so small, it's the God tier, masculinity, justice, leadership, logic, and battle, right? One of the things that I always find difficult with uh, Christianity, um, and I have been on every, I've been on both extremes, right? Like in the born again group, the Catholic group, I've been in all the spaces, um, and it's that sort of dogmatic you have to be this brand in order to be true or going to heaven. And, you know, John 3.16 says that you just have to believe in Jesus. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. You have to believe in Jesus. Uh, so God gave uh, the world his only begotten son. Those who believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's the gospel. That's it. Right. It doesn't say you have to go to Catholic mass. It doesn't say you have to, um, you know, believe the Bible 100 percent. It doesn't say anything else. It says that you have to believe in Jesus. That's it. And so um, all the things that we do to complicate that relationship between us and this ascended master, like we, we make it so difficult when really it's so simple. It is really just simple belief. You know, I believe in Santa. You know, do I think a guy in a very big red fat suit comes in, ho, ho, ho? No, obviously. Obviously, I'm not delusional, right? But I believe in the spirit of Santa. I believe in the, the, the beauty of giving during the holiday time. I believe people want to be able to give. You know, people with no money want to give something. Um, you know, and that spirit of gratitude that uh, that fills us, you know, we should carry with us throughout the whole year. Right. And so, uh, you know, let today, the hunt Sunday of hope, let that be the first day um, that you sort of fill your little Santa sack. And, you know, you can bring hope to so many without any spending any money, a kind word, a nice look, not giving them the finger when they're cutting you off, whatever. Right. There's so many ways that you can bring joy, light, love and hope to other people that don't cost a single penny. So. We're all called to be leaders. We're all called to pick up our torches and lead people um, to exude light and love and to accept it. So I was going to read cards, but I this is so long already. So I'm not going to do that. I am wishing you all the very best in light and love. And I will catch you soon. 
Be well. Take care and happy Advent. Bye-bye.